Welcome to section 13.4. In this final section of chapter 13, we're going to look just very briefly at an application of uh, uh, vector function, derivatives, and integrals um, when it comes to motion in space with velocity and acceleration. So when you study velocity and acceleration in Calc 1, everything is taking place in one direction and you're either going forwards or backwards. Now that we have the entirety of the xy plane and the entirety of space to be able to um, work with, we can expand our understanding of velocity and acceleration. So in terms of our formulas here, um, if we consider r of t to be the position function, so the position vector function, the velocity vector is going to be v of t, which will be r prime of t. Okay? So velocity is the derivative of position. If we want the speed of the object, we're going to take the magnitude of V of T, which is also the magnitude of R prime of T. And then for acceleration, we use A of T which is v prime of t, which is r double prime of t. Okay, so acceleration is the derivative of velocity, which is the derivative of position. So if we took a look at this first example, a, the position vector of an object moving in a plane is given by r of t equals t cubed i plus t squared j. Find its velocity, speed, and acceleration when t equals 1. So we can get these formulas rather quickly. Um, so we get v of t is the derivative of r. So we just differentiate each component. So that's 3t squared i plus 2tj. The speed is going to be the magnitude of this one that we just found. So as a formula, that's going to be 9t to the 4th plus 4t squared. And then acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So we get 6ti plus 2j. And we're looking specifically when t equals 1. So now we just need to substitute in the value of t equals 1. So velocity at 1 is going to be 3i plus 2j. Okay. Or the vector, just the vector 3, 2, if you prefer it written that way. Uh, the speed is going to be the square root of, let's see, that becomes 9 and 4, so just square root of 13. Right. And notice the difference between speed and velocity. Velocity still implies direction. That's why it's a vector still. Um, but speed is just the magnitude. Um, it's just how fast are you going. It doesn't care what direction that's happening in. So that's why you get a number for speed, but a vector for velocity. And then the acceleration, again, that's just 6i plus 2j. Or the vector 6, 2. So this gives us our velocity formula, our speed value, and our acceleration when t equals 1. So we use derivatives when given the position to find velocity and acceleration. We can also go back the other direction, though. If we know the velocity or acceleration, we can use those to backtrack and find the position. So that's what we have right here. So a particle has initial position r of 0 at 1, 0, 0, with initial, initial velocity v of 0. And this one, I think it might still have a typo on yours. Um, this is supposed to be 1, negative 1, 1. Uh, originally, I think it was a different vector. So if yours isn't this, please 
just scratch it out and write one negative one one for that vector. So we know initial position, we know initial velocity, and acceleration is 4t, 6t, 1. So we've got a formula for acceleration, find its velocity and position at time t. So we know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. That means that velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration. So if we have a and we want to find v, we need to integrate. So we're going to take the integral of a of t dt. And that's going to give us 2t squared, 3t squared, and t. This is indefinite, so we're going to go ahead and add that vector constant of integration, c, which we don't yet know what it is, but we can figure that out because we have a value for velocity. So since we know that v of 0 is 1, negative 1, 1, if we sub in 0 here, we get 0, 0, 0 plus c. So that works out pretty nicely. Uh, so this is the 0 vector. So it's really not going to play a role here. Um, so our constant vector is 1, negative 1, 1. And this is not always how this will happen. It's not, this one will not always just disappear. Um, so, but once we have this, we can go ahead and fill it in. So this vector, right, if we were to put in the one negative one, one in here, we can combine component by component, right, using just vector addition. So this is going to give us 2t squared plus 1, 3t squared minus 1, and t plus 1. And that is our velocity formula. To get the position formula, we take the antiderivative of velocity, so integral of v of t dt. So we get that becomes 2 thirds t cubed plus t, t cubed minus t, and 1 half t squared plus t, plus an arbitrary constant. We already used c, so I'll go ahead and use d. And we do have another initial condition here. So we know that initial position is 1, 0, 0. So we know r of 0 is 1, 0, 0. And if we plug in 0, again, this doesn't always happen, but these all do turn into zeros. So we get 0, 0, 0 plus that vector constant of integration. So d is 1, 0, 0. So we just add that into the corresponding components, which only changes the first one. So we have R of t, our position formula is 2 thirds t cubed plus t plus 1 from the constant, uh, t cubed minus t, and 1 half t squared plus t. And that is our position function. And like I said, this was going to be just a very short application of these topics. Um, and that is the end of the section that also brings us to the end of uh, chapter 13. So uh, we've talked about a lot of different uh, topics on vector functions, space curves, and doing some calculus with those. Heading into the next section, um, we're going to start to get into um, 
some different topics um, that really get us into that multivariable calculus. So it's going to be exciting, and I will talk to you all next time.